probably like 16 does a random stop and search for no reason. Even that question is crazy, yeah, because you didn't ask me if I have. It's a known thing that, yeah, you're gonna experience something, which is, that alone is just like, wow. You get what I'm saying? I remember playing football, people always call you, you black this, you black that. I wasn't really an angry or aggressive type, so I did go down the route of, I'm gonna win by winning the game. But when you look back at it, it's not nice, like you're really, really young. Some people's mum would be like, oh, dinner's ready, da 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 da, and people would go home, but mum would be like, oh, I made you jollof rice, come. They'll say it in like the accent, like, oh, you must be jollof, like, and that, like, it's some mad accent, I'd be like. I went to second year school next to Millwall Football Club, and when we left, there were men outside waiting for us, and they chased us with bottles and poles and they were screaming racial obscenities at us. I remember seeing a video of that kid Kieran in Bradford where he was getting bullied on the grass. I actually recognised that because I actually went through that when I was a kid. I, I didn't know how to handle it, I really didn't. Terrified, um, especially being a kid and sort of experiencing that from a young age. And my grandmother would just be like, just ignore it. I kind of don't want to hear that. And now I find myself, when people come to me about situations or asking for advice, I'll be like, don't watch that. It's, it's none of your business. Just don't, it's none of your business what people think of you. Just get on and do you. I think I dealt with any sort of adversity with just channeling that into me and going even more harder. And like, I'm not going to let anyone disrupt what I'm trying to do or I'm going to take that for motivation and go further. Like, I always do that. Of course, that was the first time that I experienced racism. And then throughout my life, it's just the feeling of being other or like an add-on. Depressing advice I've heard from family of being like, where I went to school is like, just remember, you might be the only black face in the room. And so when a teacher turns around, just know that, oh my God. So when your teacher turns around, you might just stand out just for the sake of standing out. So kind of just think how your behaviour might affect that. And now as I'm getting older as well, I'm realising it might also be because of their own bias, their own prejudice, which thankfully I never really unpacked as a child because I think that would have been, quite frankly, too traumatic for like a 10 year old to deal with. But it just saw it as something as like a, oh, because I'm different, they might pick on me more, but yeah. The racism that I have experienced, I wasn't aware that it was racism at the time. I just thought I wasn't getting chosen because I wasn't talented enough. Because I knew it wasn't based on talent, because if it was based on talent, I probably would have got the come up. Some people get to go, come through the front door. I had to boot down the back door. When you are, say, going for job interviews and you turn up and you're Robert Bruce, and people are shocked that that name doesn't sound black. Even having my full name on the CV, Robert Adate Bruce Conwar, and not getting no callbacks. You can see this stuff, but how do you describe this stuff? Do you know? One of the biggest racial things that I still face to this day is just going out. We've been told you can't come in and then maybe stood to the side trying to work out how, how can we convince this bouncer to let us in? But meanwhile, while we're standing there, we're watching him letting a group of five guys who aren't from an ethnic background, trying to work out why us three have been told no. Before we've opened our mouths, which is what really frustrates me, because at least then you can use the excuse to say, oh no, he sounds like he's going to be trouble, or he's drunk, or he sounds rude. Um, when I first got to Leeds for uni, um, I was quite surprised at not seeing people that look like me. You do question some things. I do remember there was one time we was in the bus garage and we asked one of the bus instructors or conductors rather to give us direction somewhere and he clean walked past us. Is it because I'm a female, I'm black, I'm young and stupid in their mind? Like, and these are thoughts I shouldn't have to consider. It's affected me in terms of like shows, um, DJing the clubs, you know, just like it's taking away that sort of enjoyment of making other people happy. Obviously, George Floyd was the biggest impact. And although it was a very bad thing, of course, I feel like a lot of people woke up. Me personally, it just made me re-educate myself on our history, on, on everything we're about. A lot, to be honest. Um, I think it was a final straw this year, like, I don't even like putting negative stuff on my my timeline or on my stories or on Twitter as much, but obviously when it's so blatant, and obviously I'm a voice in the country, in our scene, I've got to say something. If everyone's talking, you cannot ignore it. 
And that's what it was. Going through the city of London, one of the most multicultural places you could possibly be, marching through the streets, having to tell people that, that you're, that your life matters is just, it's such a weird um, juxtaposition because you're literally like, look at us all, we literally live together in relative. Yeah, it's horrible. We're all feeling grief collectively. We're all feeling angry collectively. Most of us want change. I think it's kind of made me check myself. Somebody may look at me and, and rightfully so and see that as a lighter skinned black person that I'm privileged. And that's been something that at, at first was quite difficult to take. I have to have that conversation with myself as well. It was honestly too much for me. Um, so I actually had a detox. I came off social media for about maybe three months because it was just too much for me. I've had chats with my little brother who's 13 and I don't think he, before all this, kind of understood his place in society. So the fact that he's a male and the fact that he's black, he's a target. So showing him certain things and, and sitting down and having like conversations and was like a, a, a tough thing for me, but a necessary thing. Due to my growing up within, with an exposure to Rasta culture, um, I've always had a bit of a militant streak in me. Wouldn't accept that kind of behaviour anywhere I am. I, I guess it's just made me angry, but also pretty happy in the sense that it can't be hidden or not discussed. There's a lot more acknowledgement towards it. A lot of people who had no understanding of it, who are not of colour, really want to understand it. A lot of people saying, yeah, Blackout Tuesday, everyone was putting up black boxes, black boxes, but nothing was done. People, things have been done. To my brothers, to my good friends, my best mates, and now presidents of Def Jam Records in the UK. Like my brother, my guy guys, you know? People in high places at streaming companies, at record companies, media companies, PR companies, entertainment companies, like, you, you've got to take on board what it is. I've really had to kind of decide what truly makes me happy, what am I going to allow to come into my life. So I feel like I've come out being a lot more mindful about how I spend my time, who I spend my time with, and you know, just in general. Reflection has been a really important time for me this year in particular. So, um, but also having gratitude, being grateful for all the positive things that are in my life. I've ended up in a position where I'm just like, I'm, I'm advocating for change and I'm being much more vocal and actually it's changed me in a way where I now feel much more comfortable speaking out about racism, whether it's on social media. And that's, that's not um, something I felt comfortable speaking out about before. Look, the media is a, is a predominantly white um, industry. My career started off in journalism, which is, again, 94% white people. The stats say that. So I've always felt like I can't just speak about racism because I am always going to be outnumbered. So in a weird way, the events of this year gave me that confidence to do it. If only I had the answer. <laughs> I don't know. People just see things differently and I feel like they shouldn't really like just see it as okay cool you're black you're white you can still do this you can still do that there's no difference like people just make it a bit weird like why would you want to make it weird equality in every aspect of life money power justice housing care aftercare hospital care equality equality all the way through just having people existing in places where decisions are made. Not after the decision has been made, not, you know, saying the words and being a black person. I mean, actually having the ideas and implementing them. Conversations with yourself, with your family, with, with your colleagues, with your friends, with somebody on the bus, because that's how, essentially, how people are gonna learn. You should be optimistic, because it's not always the end of the world, but the media will make you feel like it is. Most of it's down to re-education, you know, because everything's taught. But if you've never seen a black person, never been exposed to black culture, all you see are what the media portrays in terms of criminals, gangster rappers and stuff like that, you're going to build a picture. And if that's not being countered by education on the grassroots from a younger age, then that's the image we're all going to grow up with. If it was on the curriculum when I was at school, I wouldn't have gone through what I went through. And that's a fact. Being mixed race 
kind of get it from both sides as well. I think that's, that adds to it because then, then it's like, well, where do you actually belong? I've had racist encounters with people and I've literally just not even felt that they're worth the time to explain why they're wrong and racist because you can just see that they're not going to understand. I think, yeah, educating those who aren't educated, um, separating the ignorant from the racism um, and then tackling that. Things like this do help. I think our own people need to stop segregating ourselves from the rest of the world as well. Be passionate, be proud of your heritage, of your culture. But the minute that you start to make it about us and them adds to the problem even more. A lot of mixes, a lot of Instagram, um, live talks with people that I haven't seen in a minute. I guess it's that thing about being extra caring. I think that's one thing that it's shown we've all got to be like that. It's so sad that it had to happen in such unfortunate circumstances, but I do feel like me and the black community, we've come together in a way which I've never actually seen before in my whole entire life. It's great to see so many people come together to support the movement um, and to make so many people aware who wasn't aware of what is going on. We're not afraid. We're unapologetically sharing positive things. I look at Black Pound Day, like that's such an incredible thing. You know, before 2020, I don't know if this video would have existed, if we would have been so open and so honest about our experiences because we've always wanted to be palatable. That's the way that we've come together. I think it's, you know, the black people at Capital Extra, you know, acknowledging that actually we're here and we're loud and we exist and we're in these positions for a reason.